Hey, it's Dave Hompas here from hpylorisymptoms.com. In this short video, I'd just like to explain how candida overgrowth may contribute to heartburn and irritable bowel syndrome. Now, just to explain what candida is, it is actually a yeast and fungal organism, and it's part of the natural microbe population that lives in the digestive system, but it's not really supposed to be there in very high numbers. When you take antibiotics, or if you're very stressed and your immune system becomes suppressed, if you're eating a diet that's full of processed carbohydrates and sugar, and you're drinking a lot of alcohol, the candida can actually start to proliferate and it can start to overgrow, a little bit like weeds overgrow in a garden. And it can overgrow pretty much anywhere in the digestive tract. It can overgrow in the mouth, in which case it's oral thrush. And you might see, if you look in the mirror, a little white or yellow coating on the back of your tongue. That's a sign of candida overgrowth. Women can also experience candida overgrowth in the vaginal tract. Candida can overgrow in the esophagus as well, or in the throat. It can overgrow in the stomach, and it can overgrow in the intestines. Now, when candida overgrows, it can really start to irritate the tissue that it's coming into contact with. So if it's overgrowing in the intestine, it can create a lot of problems in the intestinal area. It can create irritation and inflammation, it can start to affect the way that you're digesting and absorbing your food. If you imagine a white coated tongue and then picture that happening in your digestive tubing, you can quickly realize that having a candida overgrowth anywhere in the digestive system can lead to a disruption in your ability to digest food and absorb nutrients as well. Now the irritation in the small intestine and the fact that your immune system mounts a response to the candida can lead to a whole bunch of different symptoms. So typically when people have candida, there's a lot of bloating, there's a lot of excess gas and wind, uh, there's a potential for constipation, there's a potential for diarrhea, it can literally go either way, either constipation or diarrhea. And more often than not, what people find is that they actually kind of oscillate between the two or alternate between the two. For a few days they may be really constipated, and then for a few days they may have loose stools or even diarrhea. Now, candida often overgrows because of changes in the digestive environment. And one of the major changes that we see that seems to affect candida overgrowth is low stomach acid. When the stomach acid levels drop too low, there's nothing to protect the stomach from the marauding or opportunistic candida organisms, and also other bacteria and parasites, which we cover in another video. If the candida is overgrowing in the stomach, or if it's overgrowing in the throat, it can cause direct irritation that might express itself as heartburn or symptoms that are similar to acid reflux. Furthermore, if you have candida living in your small intestine, you're more likely to ferment carbohydrate foods when you eat them. So anything that you eat that is rich in carbohydrates, where there's a, uh, where there's a candida overgrowth, the candida organisms love sugar. They love carbohydrate as a food source and they ferment it. And when they ferment it, the fermentation process gives off lots and lots of different gases. When those gases are given off, not only can it make you feel bloated, but it can also increase the pressure in your thorax and your abdomen. And that can literally squeeze everything up. And as you push everything up through the stomach and up into the esophagus, again, you can create a situation where you may experience heartburn and acid reflux. Now, how do you figure out whether you have candida? Well, there's no real way of knowing whether you have it further down your digestive system unless you run the appropriate test. Unfortunately, doctors are not that interested in testing for candida. Candida is not really considered a problem unless you have a really serious oral candida problem, or if you're a female and you have a serious vaginal candida problem. If candida is kind of hanging out and causing a lot of problems elsewhere in the digestive system, the medics are not really that interested in testing. To be honest, even when they do test, they may not find the candida because it's not always that easy to see in things like stool tests. When we're working with our clients and patients, we use a stool test and sometimes something called an organic acids test. And these two tests together give us a very, very accurate indication of whether you may have, or whether our clients and patients may have a candida overgrowth. If a candida overgrowth is found, then we have very specific steps related to nutrition, eating habits, and uh, herbal protocols to 
help to knock out the candida and then re-establish proper digestive function. If you'd like any help with your own personal situation, if you suspect that you might have candida or any other nasty microorganism living in your digestive system, then you might want to just take a look at my website, which is hpylorisymptoms.com. There's a whole ton of information there to help you overcome your symptoms in the shortest possible time, and I'd love to be able to help. My name's Dave Hompez. Thanks a million for watching this video, and I will catch you again very soon.